Hey guys, it's your professor here. So I know we had a little setback from earlier because of COVID-19. Um, so I was there to go ahead and give you guys a week off uh, your lessons and just for you to catch up and turn in any assignments that needed to be turned in. So back to where we get uh, at again, we need to get back into our um, lesson plans. We need to get back into working and our daily schedule. So. I just want to give you guys an update that so for this whole week I want you guys to get back on task and just start um, uh, working on your projects all right so to start off we got to start with lesson 11 where we left off with lesson 10 um, so here we're continuing on from our full stack development we're going to talk about what is jQuery so write less do more so for the rest of this course we're going to look at tools we can use to make our lives as developers easier. Programming is as tough as it is, as developers are always looking for tools that will make developing faster and easier. Our first optional tool is jQuery, right? So in the previous lesson, we mentioned that JavaScript has a funny name. Uh, it doesn't have much to do with JavaScript uh, programming language, and marketing team at Sun thought it would be cool just to call it that. So the real name of JavaScript is right here, ECMA script, or just ES. Think of JavaScript as its uh, marketing name the, and ECMA script as its techie name. In casual conversation, everyone calls it JS, but when we talk about each and uh, version differences, you'll see people refer to ES5 and ES6. So right now, um, this was the um, previous version, and right now we're on the newest version right now, which is ES6. And you know it's having a lot more browser support and different keywords that are updated to the new um, data structures. So, however, before we had E6, we had to come up our own ways to make it JS better into jQuery, a free and open source library for JavaScript. So, what is library? So, think of a library as like um, a collection of pre-written code that performed. You perform tasks that helps you perform tasks. So libraries can be a free and open source or requirement payment for usage. Libraries are useful. There is a good chance someone has solved a problem and created a library for it. So uh, when we talk about paid um, payment library, those are like companies that already um, already worked on a, a data structures and you know you pay for them to use it. And then there's open source, which you know it's free for the community for them to use. And all they do is just um, do contributions. So anybody that's smart enough and are genius and really good at coding, they'll go ahead and um, help the community out and, you know, go ahead and uh, update the library. So here, um, you know, jQuery has been incredibly popular with ES5, but ES6 made many improvements to JS, and now we're seeing developers favorite ES6 and or TypeScript over jQuery. We are including jQuery in this course because there's a large amount of legacy web applications that are using it, and there's just good possibility that you see jQuery on the job. So to install jQuery, you can uh, go ahead and open this right here, um, and go ahead, uh, do have an MPN. If you haven't downloaded MPN, I'll go ahead and suggest you download Git, which is um, you know one of these um, version control, source control type of terminals. And here you're able to just like type this command in called Git clone. So you just type this whole command into your to your Git um, either Git command or Git bash. So this is your Git command. This is your Git bash, and you could just type it in, right? And then oh. It'll just download it for you here, um, to that directory, or if you want, you could just just download it like right here in the compressed version right here. And that's just you know whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I really don't mind how you um, download it, anyways. So, um, so so after that, you could choose to compress or uncompress. Uh, either will work. In your head, an HTML include a script tag that points to a jQuery JS file. Now your page can use jQuery library, right? So here you'll have your your updated data structures and um, of jQuery. So jQuery syntax. So jQuery uses the following syntax to use the dollar symbol. Um, 
So ne- let's break it down, right? So number one, jQuery syntax begins with a dollar sign. The HTML element being worked on is uh, is listed in the parentheses, example, document, or H1. The jQuery action we want to perform comes next, for example, dot .click or dot .html. Any functions, arguments, variables that need to be passed in parentheses. The following two blocks of code can do the same thing. One is written in basic JavaScript and one of with jQuery. Both remove the element with ID my HTML from the web page. So here this is JS. So here you have um, you know your whole JS um, function here. And the bottom, this is gonna be your jQuery, right? So here now it says so dollar symbol inside your parentheses and you have a dot remove parentheses. As you can see, you can do the same uh, task with less code and there's uh, the benefits of using jQuery. Also, just reading the code, it makes it clear that we are removing the element here. In the past, other features that made jQuery useful as its ability to select elements by CSS selectors, however, document.query selector is now standard in JavaScript and allows for similar element selection using complex CSS selectors. So to recap, jQuery is a library for JavaScript. It has a new syntax to JavaScript. Uh, you don't use, you don't have to use jQuery. You can just use JavaScript if you want. JavaScript saves time by making our code shorter, easier to write, and easier to read. jQuery is easy, pretty easy to learn. jQuery is a good introduction while we use libraries and frameworks in order to write less and do more. So the last thing we want to stress is that jQuery doesn't replace JavaScript. jQuery just doesn't even work without JavaScript. So jQuery just gives us the option to use some very useful shortcuts and tricks we can easily use. Even if we use jQuery, we could still be writing a lot of JavaScript in a complex web scripting. So more example of basic syntax. So here, uh, you just have a little bit more of a uh, jQuery thing, you know. Here, this is using your P elements. This is gonna use your, uh, it's gonna remove element with ID, my HTML from the document. And this is a uh, ID, this is gonna be, this is some class, so you see the period here. And here, it's just gonna hide. So this is the, um, you know, the action that's gonna do it. So remove and hide. So, you know, go ahead and learn more about jQuery on here. So about jQuery, using jQuery Core, you know, Ajax plugins, jQuery UI mobile. So here I'll go ahead and um, I want to be using J, uh, jQuery Core, right? So here so you could just use dollar versus dollar. So you can just read about this. Until now, we've been dealing entirely with methods that are called jQuery object. For example, dollar h1 dot remove. Most jQuery methods are called on jQuery objects as shown below. These methods are said to be part of the $.fm namespace or jQuery prototype and the best thought of as jQuery object methods. Uh, there are several methods that do not act on a selection. These uh, methods are said to be part of the jQuery namespace and the best thought of the core jQuery methods. So this decision can be incredibly confusing to new jQuery users. And, uh, Methods can call jQuery selections are in the dollar fm namespace and I receive and return the selection as this. So here, this is just going to talk about um, there's just um, you know the difference between this and this. You know, here we can talk about document got dot ready. The page can be manipulated safely until the document is ready. jQuery detects the state of readiness for you. Code included inside is a uh, you know dollar document ready. Only one, run once the page document object model is ready for JavaScript code to execute. So code included inside window dot on load function will run once the entire page or image, not just the DOM is ready. So here you use the dollar document dot ready function console dot log ready. So experienced developers sometimes use the shorthand. Um, dollar symbols for the dollar document that read it. If you're writing code that people who aren't experienced with jQuery may see, it's best to use a long form. Um, so here, you know, you can just document that ready function, const log document loaded, window unload function, const log. All right, so, you know, go ahead. If you wanted to, right, let's go ahead and, you know, experiment with the, what type of code this is, right? So. You know, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and just drop that down. All right, control new tab. Oh, no. Oops. Is it shift new? 
file new control control new right so I'm trying to make a new file there you go let's go ahead and save this as um, doc that HTML Alright, so here let's just go ahead and so you know first off uh, HTML you know you have your script So you go to https.code. So here it's just going to take the um, this type of, actually, since I don't know how to, um, I don't want to write this all out, right? So here we're just going to implement what we did earlier, which was get the source code from this um, right here, the jQuery. And then we go ahead and console log it out, document loaded. Right, so here it should say doc document loaded. Let's go check out the console. So you know, right now it's showing refuse to load image because this and that. All right, so here it says document loaded. Console window loaded. So we have window loaded, and then here we have our little tech crunch. Which it shouldn't show, but uh, I guess this is like a very old, um, outdated um, source code uh, type of code in here. So let's go ahead and jump over to our jQuery um, lesson 11.2, which is going to talk about document.ready and window onload. So in the previous lesson, we just placed a script tag on the body of the body. One of the main reasons of, for this approach is to show the script only runs after all the elements of the HTML and CSS are loaded. jQuery gives us a helpful way of making sure scripts are not run until the script document is finished, loaded through the $document.ready method. So here, again, uh, the statements inside this document uh, .ready will run as soon as the fin uh, page finishes loading. We could use this as a safely remove our script tag from the bottom of our HTML document and you just link in the HTML head now. A few small details on this function, so the dollar sign document ready code will run once the page is loaded, but before the images are loaded, the document ready will run after the peer JS window onload event. Below is an example of these in the action. So here you have your window.onload equals fun, document ready function. You have all your thing, you have your alert. I ran on document ready. Function fun one alert around the window being went load. So when the page is loaded, the fun one function will execute first due to being called by the window dot onload. The run this code first will be executed. Um, second due to the being called by the document dot ready together. These are both options for running JS code before anything else can happen and are good ways to get your script tag out of the body of the HTML link inside the head. So review the 11.2 example HTML inside this in this action. Um, on our J Ajax on Ray state change, which uh, we saw in the previous ex uh, lesson, is an example of a callback. In the ready stage change code, we wrote a callback to tell Ajax what to do after the HTTP communication was first. In jQuery, we have some cool effect and animation tricks we can use, and we could put a callback after the effect is finished. So here's a basic example. So here you have the um, box. Um, so here you have a box class that animate. And then here you have a width of 500 pixels, slow function. Again, text complete, alert. The code above we're running an animated and element by slowly increasing its width. When the width has been resized, a callback occurs. The callback runs a function to pop an alert and change the text of an element after the main job is finished. So here we're gonna have 11.2 example HTML. So go ahead and um, you know, let's go ahead and get some of those codes actually. So if I just go ahead and um, go into modules or.
so in here you'll just be able to find some of your um huh. you're able to find your your lesson files if i could just pull it up I'm having trouble okay so here we'll go code examples Download our lesson 11-2. So right now what we have in our lab folder, let's go check our lab folder. So here we go at lab 11. We got 11-1. So let's go ahead and download all these examples. So 11-2. Sorry, executing on there. 11-3. Okay, we'll go ahead and go to downloads, take these, 11.2, 11.3, cut, bring it back into our folder. So let's go see what we have right now. So 11.1, um, we could actually pull that up right now. So if we want, we could just 11-1-jQuery syntax that HTML let's go ahead and open this up all right so here you'll have your styling which is going to be your CSS so here it has a box and here you have um, your HTML so here you'll have your um, content inside you'll have your Jake you know your your some of the um, letterings or text and here is giving a div class box okay, so here you have like your little container and here you'll have your function here. Now remember, we 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 script source from uh, jQuery here. So here is just telling you, uh, you know, go ahead and remove an element p changed by jQuery. Change the inner HTML of all PS by changed by jQuery. Hide all the elements of the same class. Um, here box box text complete function text pop up window. And. From there, you know, you go ahead and you can execute and load and complete. Pretty cool. This is changed by jQuery. And that's going to be 11.2. Let's go check out 11.2 examples, what we just did earlier. Um, so here we're still sourcing from a 3.4 JavaScript. And here we have a button ID. And then here we have our HTML. Um, and here you have your um, ID is equal to my email, hello, paragraph, some text, it's just some class, window dot onload equals, you know, fun one. And then same thing. Let's go ahead and execute this also. So it's going to be 11 2 examples.html. Kind of freezing up right now, so I'm trying to see what's going on. If it frees up, just debug it. Let's go wrong with that bit debugging. Exit out the terminal, put a new terminal in, go ahead and enter. Let's open up our example again. Examples HTML. Let's go ahead and open that up. The, this page says I ran on the window being load, put OK. This page I ran on the docking being ready. And then when it, you clicked on it, it changed by jQuery, execute JS, you know. That's just a simple um, tutorial on the jQuery. Let's go ahead and uh, switch it over to 11.3, which is jQuery tips and tricks. So this lesson gives us just a list of the most common and time-saving jQuery methods when and how to use them. For each of these items, look at the examples provided to get an extended understanding of how to use them. So 
number one i want to uh so here i make some js code run as soon as the page load this is a document dot ready jquery method example so here you could check that out get the get so here get or replace the content of html here you just use a dot sign element dot text element dot html parentheses you know go ahead and open some of these websites and you could check it out so here you can run show value run things like that all right uh um so this is also this is the different one so set text set html set value pretty cool all right so here every time you click on these it'll change um it'll get the element and then it'll just uh change while you're interacting with it okay so you know i'm moving it and ex exact existing html element from the page this deletes the element so here you use a dollar sign element dot remove hide an element from the page without deleting it you know use hide show fade in speed so you could just use a fade in speed pretty cool that's uh um all in the data structures of jquery all right and you know you could do fade out pretty cool uh what else is there um speed callback start animation there it is use ajax to load data from the web server so here you can check that example in particular i want to point out the difference in the uh code between plain js and jquery in our ajax call so here you have your javascript your jquery library you can see the jQuery is so much less code. This demonstrates the value of using libraries as well as the concept of extraction. The extraction in program is hiding away the more complex code and replacing it with simpler, easier to use code. jQuery hides the complexity of making an Ajax call it by giving you something that is easier to understand and use. You'll want to load some Ajax data. Behind the load method, all of the more complex JavaScript code still runs. In programming, we want to create good abstractions whenever we code com comes complex. We'll talk about abstraction more in our C sharp course. Okay, so key terms is abstraction. Uh, lesson file, go ahead and open this right here. All right, so here you go ahead and go to 11 3 dash. Um, so it's going to be Ajax load HTML. Go ahead and open it. So here you have your jQuery syntax, get some Ajax data, execute. And here I'll just have like all your um, Ajax data type stuff in here, you know, pretty cool way to uh, extract some data from from there. All right. So here let's go ahead and jump over to our last one, which is our last lab, which is jQuery free practice. So in this lesson, we'll work through some practical exercise using jQuery. There's nothing to turn into this lab, so go to this website right here and start looking at the practical exercise part one. Each exercise has HTML examples and solution. Be sure to look at the solution to learn how the task can be done. Ask your instructor uh, any questions you have about the particular problem. The exercise to attempt, so exercise 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 13, 14, 15, 17, 25, 29, 30, 42, 47, 49, 50. If you get all these exercises before the end of class, feel free to continue doing more on your own, all right? So here, go ahead and try some of these exercises. And that'll be it for your lessons, okay? So I hope you guys uh, get a better understanding of what jQuery is. Um, so basically, it's going to be uh, data structures that you're able to pull from your, um, you know, from your environment here. And you just add on to a little bit more uh, arsenal for your JavaScript. So that's that's a little bit more jQuery, and then we're gonna go diving in, in deep pretty soon. We got two more classes, um, two more lessons for the end of our um, the end of our uh, user interface, and then we'll go ahead and jump in over to our next section. Um, so, anyways, about that, let's go ahead and speed have a speed up recovery from our uh, from being delayed with uh, the COVID. And other than that, I wish you guys um, happy coding and go ahead and work on some of the projects and and turn in all the assignments that needs to be due. And I'll see you guys later, all right?